Today on Things I Love, we're all about The Mandalorian Season 1. Going to be doing a season recap there with my good friend Justin Williams from the Super Tangent Podcast. So get your popcorn, get your drink, hang in there. It's going to be a great show. Welcome back to Things I Love. Today on show number 42, we're talking all about The Mandalorian. As I said, I've got my good friend, Justin Williams, back with us from the Super Tangent Podcast. How you doing, Justin? fan freaking tastic Saturday morning, and I ate breakfast already, so I am so full of energy, I feel great. <laughs> good, I have not eaten breakfast yet, but I'm going to get there, I'm going to get there, I'm going to get there. <laughs> well, like I said, we're talking about The Mandalorian today. Uh, season one is now uh, behind us. It's in the books. But look, now that we have, uh, we don't have to wait week to week, which I actually loved that we did that. It was kind of something to look forward to. But now we can go back and binge it. And, and so that's what I've been doing. And we're going to talk about that today, kind of do a full recap of the, the entire season as much as we can but if you're new to this channel every single week we bring you the news uh, from disney star wars and lego on tuesdays and then on fridays during this show we dive a little bit deeper into our fandom so that's what we're going to do today hit that subscribe button down below hit that bell to be notified of these weekly positive videos and give us a big thumbs up if you like this video and i know you're going to love it let's get right into it justin the mandalorian why is it so important that we have this show oh um <laughs> I think one of the, ah, uh, it's just such a good show. We're just talking about how it was influenced by spaghetti westerns. Um, you know, I, I think it's important. It kind of draws back to why the original movie was so important in the first place. You know, George Lucas in 1977, when the film was released, did a spectacular job of blending um, Eastern and Western influences into this one big film. A lot of films, I think, at the time were just about, you know, uh, you know, gunslinging, you know? Right. Um, and other films were just about aerial dogfights. And other films, primarily, you know, Japanese films, uh, you know, or Asian films had to do with sword fighting. Well, Star Wars takes all three of those, throws them into the, or I guess what we perceive as the future, even though the film says it takes place back in time, and meshes it all together so we have these amazing dog fighting scenes and these amazing lightsaber duels right. and these amazing you know pew 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 you know and um that's the beauty of star wars it's not always about the sith jedi force conflict sure. it's not always about the you know the non force force sensitive characters just doing what they do there's so many facets and aspects to it which makes star wars so remarkable and it, yeah. it expands the lore so the, the thing that i think about with the Mandalorian is that it dives into territory um, either that we haven't seen before or that we haven't thought about before. You know, we've sure. been so, it's so easy to get consumed by the Jedi Sith conflict and the lightsaber duels that that's all we think of Star Wars. Right. And Mandalorian goes ahead and reminds us, actually, yeah. that's not quite true. Right. And Let me prove it to you. And, and then also, I mean, if you're, a, if you're a big Boba Fett fan like I am, um, that's mm -hmm. kind of been your mentality of... Mandalorians, even though yeah. Boba Fett's not really a Mandalorian, but we don't have to get into that <laughs> right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you've got Boba Fett, and then if you watch Rebels, you've got Sabine. Um, but, you know, it's very limited uh, as to the Mandalorian culture. And so this right. has really opened that up for us. And you know what's really interesting is you talk about lightsaber duels and stuff. We're going to get into this later, but there was only one lightsaber in the whole season of the Mandalorian. Right. I mean, yeah. and, you, and honestly... I didn't miss it. I mean, I was I didn't really even phase me until at the end, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, this is Star Wars." There, there's right. a lightsaber. Right. <laughs> um, right. But you know, I think this is really important, and it's a and it's a such a great time in the history of Star Wars that we're we're done with the Skywalker saga. Which, if yeah. you haven't seen our review, Justin and I reviewed that a few weeks ago. You can check that out right up here. Mm -hmm. um, but we're done with that saga, so what's next kind of thing? And right, right. with Disney Plus, they're able to to go deeper by doing these um, these series and mm -hmm. that are several hours long rather than just a couple of hours long, and they can go deeper into the into the legend, into the lore, um, 
you know, of these characters. And so I think that for a super fan of Star Wars, um, this is 100% the right move. Rather than oh, focusing yeah. on a new movie right now, which we got new mm -hmm. movies coming. We don't know what they are. But new films are coming in, I think, 2022 is what they said. Yeah. Um, but between now and then, um, we've got... You know the Mandalorian, and we've got uh, um, mm -hmm. Kenobi coming, and we've got uh, right. Cassian uh, Endor, and mm -hmm. so it's just going to help us to go even deeper into into those characters, into those cultures, into those uh, races, into those species, and uh, yeah. and so you know, as a fan, I think that's one of the things that I that I needed that I didn't know that I needed right. um, was the Mandalorian just going deeper into this culture, <clears throat> and I love. Mm -hmm. The culture of the Mandalorians. Um, <clears throat> there's, <clears throat> there's been, you know, different, different trajectories of the Mandalorians. You've got Boba Fett, um, right. who, you know, was it from the from the beginning, and then through the Rebels se uh, series. And have you watched the Rebels much? <clears throat> just just through the first season, and yeah, I I was just telling you too. Like that's something that I definitely want to get into, so that. I can see all it's a great of the show. connections. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great show, and so you've got Sabine Wren in in that, and, and it gives me some questions, um, you know, because they do things a little bit differently, and why do they do things differently? Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I think that Star Wars does is it it raises questions in us that uh, we didn't know that we needed the answers to. <laughs> right, right. But now I'm like, okay, so why does he leave his helmet on uh, all the time? I mean, right. like, let's get into that a little bit. Why does he have to have his helmet on all the time? Sabine Wren in Rebels didn't have it on all the time. She took it off right. often. She was probably with it off more than on. But what, what do you what do you think about that? I honestly, um, I, I like I said, I, I haven't watched Rebels, but I read a little bit into it when I was reading into the um, the history of the of the dark saber, and that really surprised me because. Uh, you know, our hero, the Mandalorian, um, yeah, he never takes it off. Uh, the other Mandalorians, including the armorer uh, in the show, don't take their helmets off, uh, at least in front of other people. So I, I, did, I couldn't really come up with an answer. Yeah, not, I mean, not only do they not take it off, but it is like a really big part of who they are. There's that fight between um, the Mandalorian um, and... Uh, one of the other <laughs> Mandalorians. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I forget what what they call him now. There's a black figure of him, black mm -hmm. series figure that I can't find because it's like so wanted right now. But uh, yeah. the big gunner Mandalorian or whatever, big big guy. Right. And right. first right. thing he does, first thing he does is he goes to rip off that that helmet, and yeah. and that becomes kind of a fight just about keeping that helmet on. Yeah, um, they take it. I mean, that is not a game. No, that is super serious. And I'm wondering if it's just like maybe a sect of the Mandalorians that really are super devout about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. He here's what I think, and it's all guessing, but yeah. I think that um, there's just this desire to take the Mandalorians back to what they were. Um, okay. You know, in in chapter two, I believe. Um, I think that's the one with the Jawas. Um, mm. He mentions to Kawil that he's got to take his weapon with him because the weapons are part of their religion. Right. Um, and there's been this debate over the years: is what is what is the Mandalorian? Is it a religion? Is it a, a species? Is it a race? Is it what? Mm. Um, but I think there's just all of these um, kind of rules about them. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of makes me think of the. Pharisees in the Bible, you know, there's all these rules mm -hmm. that, yeah, I, I, yeah. you know, I, he'll still be a Mandalorian if he takes his helmet off. Right. But to him, it means so much because they took care of him. They raised him from whenever he was a, a foundling and he lost his parents. And yeah, and so it, there's this deep connection to it. And, and I think that's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, yeah. Uh, and then just kind of wanting to take it back to the original uh, state of the Mandalorians. So. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's interesting that you say that because of just this period in Star Wars where the series takes place. You know, you get this vibe of lawlessness. The Galactic Empire has been destroyed, and I think the actual the majority of the series kind of takes place 
um, geographically in locations where the New Republic, which I believe has already been established by this point, mm -hmm. doesn't really govern what's going on in these areas yeah. uh, of lawlessness and bounty hunting and things like that. And so, you know, when they call be... it the Outer Rim, that there's going to be some lawlessness <laughs> going on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's like this, this kind of forgotten realm where you, or maybe not forgotten, but for whatever reason, you just don't go there, you don't yeah. touch it, you know? But I also believe that kind of during this time, this is kind of where the remnants of the Empire are secretly forming the First Order. Um, oh, yeah. You know, because they're they're kind of out of the distance of the New Republic as well. And as is Starkiller Base, which we see in Episode 7. So I'm, I'm curious if a second season will eventually see the Mandalorian and maybe his peripheral characters, his supporting characters, eventually maybe see the planet that yeah. Starkiller base is built on or, or kind of tie into that because that's kind of where the timeline is headed. But Right, um, and I agree that know. this is the beginning. I mean, with Moff Gideon um, it, it, towards the end, this is mm -hmm. the beginning of the First Order. You know, he's got his TIE fighter that, you know, the wings go, go all the way down and up. And yeah, which sweet. was so cool. <laughs> yeah. But you can kind of see there's little things, you know, happening with the First Order that, that makes you think the First Order is being built. I mean, yeah. all of the stormtroopers that he has coming, they were they were all yeah. dirty and nasty and everything right, until right. he comes, and then they're all clean and they're got, nice and yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, yeah that was that was yeah. cool. Uh, so what? Let's let's talk about the the armor a little bit. The the importance of Mandalorian armor and and you know, we'll bring Baby Yoda into it. I didn't want to bring him into it yet, but yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. in it from the very beginning, from Absolutely. chapter one. Um, but I, I, I hope people can not get past Baby Yoda, but uh, or the child, um, the child, but yeah. see the show for more than just the child. Um, mm -hmm. There's so much there, but um, he does this job so that he can get the best car, you know, the best yeah. car for his for his armor. Right. And you know, what what do you think about that? Uh, the what's the importance, kind of like the helmet of the the armor to a Mandalorian. Yeah. I think I think the importance is quite similar. I remember at one point he gets an insignia on his shoulder. Right. I believe it was his right shoulder, and that was like an extremely proud moment for him, yeah. you know. And uh, kind of knowing about his past and how he's a foundling, right? Which I, I gather means he wasn't really born into this, Correct. Uh, you know, Mandalorian tradition. He was like rescued by Mandalorians, as we see later on in the series on a flashback. And he was taken in, and so which, I think which again, I, I got I just gotta go there because yeah, I, in scripture, you know, uh, we are adopted into the kingship. We are adopted yeah. by God, by Christ, and mm -hmm. and that gives us an heir to the throne. And I yeah. just I love that imagery that Star Wars always brings in. I know they're not thinking about it the same way that I'm thinking about it, but. Um, seeing that you know he was a foundling and he was adopted into this culture and now it means yeah. so much to him um, right he's like he's dedicated to it you know and he's always trying to live up to the standard of the people that rescued him which is a great parallel for Christianity yeah um, you know uh, but I think that yeah I think as someone who understands and is totally okay with the fact that he is a foundling um, and he takes responsibility for that. But he, I think there's also the guilt with, you know, his parents being killed um, in that battle. And I think there's just a lot of trauma there. And so being a Mandalorian, uh, even just with the namesake, it gives him purpose. You yeah. know, it gives him a huge identity, which he may not otherwise yeah. have. Yeah. Uh, and I think his armor is just a piece of that, being a mercenary, being a warrior. That's something to be proud of. Yeah. Um, especially in a time of lawlessness, to have any sort, any sense of morality uh, yeah. on the outer rim, I think is really, really huge. And he has character, he has integrity. And, um, yeah. And that, yeah let, let's go there for a little bit. I mean, talk about yeah. morality, um, but you're also talking about a bounty hunter. So, right. you know, morality, integrity, character with a bounty hunter, I, who would have ever thought that? But um, Filoni and Favreau have done an amazing job of... of Kind of peeling back the layers of this character and letting you into the fact that he's he's not um, this quote unquote bad guy right um, he's a bounty hunter and he has a job um, but he also has a heart and he, and he, mm -hmm. and he cares um, you know he, he 
he gets the child, takes it back, um, and then it, his integrity kicks in, his character kicks in. He's like, I can't, I can't mm-hmm. do this. And then the whole yeah. series, you know, goes into this keeping the child safe. Right. Um, but I love right. that he has character, character that I would aspire to. He really has heart. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah. the fact that he's a bounty hunter just makes it even all more stronger. Um, right. Absolutely. And we we kind of see this trend uh, across Star Wars where we see these guys with titles like stormtrooper or smuggler, which are really bad things in this universe. Um, turn around we see finn turn around we see han solo actually does have a heart you yeah know, he helped you know the the aiding of the death star and a few scenes earlier he said i'm not doing that that's suicide and then before we know it you know he yeah. took the shot that saved luke and then luke took took the shot that saved the the save the planet so yeah. um you know we see that a lot and it's great to see that with the mandalorian uh it's great to see that with with just his character and his past what he represents how he interacts with other characters right his mistrust for droids <laughs> just, oh i love that just, I, I, I love that running gag he just hates droids until um, the very end when the droid they... saves his life right that was so good <laughs> and he was like you're sad aren't you and he was like no i'm not <laughs> it was so good that was just they they played that so well and look he does I, he does have a heart my favorite you know? i mean obviously spoilers in this um my favorite scene, probably of the whole uh, season, was when IG-11 takes his helmet off. And it's not because, yeah. you know, I could easily say it's because I just wanted to see his face. But I, I know yeah. what Pedro, Pedro Pascal looks like. Um, right. But that one scene had so much emotion in his face, mm-hmm. showing that I don't want to trust you, but I'm going to. And right. And, uh, and then he saves his life, and and wouldn't it be nice if you could just that quickly save your life? <laughs> oh my god! <gosh, laughs> I mean, it's like yeah. let me just use this this uh, stuff, and here we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, great great scene. Um, Ig Eleven, man, uh, I was a big. Um, wait, am I saying that wrong? Is it Ig? I'm, I'm pretty sure, sure it's Ig. It's yeah. IG, yeah, I know, but which one? Eighty eight or eleven? Oh, uh, <laughs> right, because there were. Uh, That's where I I'm like, it, I, I think it's eleven. Yeah, IG eighty eight was in was in the the, the films. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> eleven was in the show, and he was voiced by uh by Ta- Taika Waititi. Uh, Taika Waititi. Yeah. Who directed Thor Ragnarok right. and other stuff? So that, that was just a really cool. And I think he directed the Taika also directed the episode eight of season one. The he last did. Episode. I I am becoming a huge fan of Taika Waititi. He's, his stuff is great. His it humor is. is great. It, uh, yeah, he's just he's just spectacular. And how fun must it be for them to have all these Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, like directors and people in the background involved with this? John Favreau is oh, the, yeah. you know, the the you know the creator of this show. You yeah. know, and he directed Iron Man one and two, and served as producer for the Avengers films. And and so like you have all these creative minds, yeah, these artistic, wonderful minds, you know, helming this instead of just some random guy in the street. You end up getting you know, crap Star Wars stuff, and you don't want that. Like, this series deserves well, so much more respect. It does. So I'm glad that they're, they're actually giving it. Have you, heard, have you heard that Kevin Feige has, has signed on to do some Star Wars? I have, and I'm apprehensive. I know, well. I, yeah. I, look, I'm not the biggest Marvel fan, but it's not because I, it's not because I don't like Marvel, it's because I don't have the connection to it as I did when I was, because it wasn't around when I was 10 years old. Right. I mean, it was in the comics. For you, yeah. Yeah, it was in the comics, but I wasn't a comic guy. Um, mm-hmm. So I just don't have that um, that connection to it. I love the films, mm-hmm. but I don't love them like I do Star Wars. Absolutely. However, Kevin Feige, like, he's done some pretty amazing things with that franchise. Yeah. Um, and so I'm interested to see what he could bring to Star Wars. I, I think, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we might be pleasantly surprised <laughs> i hope so i hope I, so i hope so yeah i mean it's all under the disney banner which which is good and bad in various ways uh i think more good than bad um yeah you do know what show you're on right yeah absolutely <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> that I, I by bad let me let me <laughs> no, that. I, by bad i mean change right? correct when when the force awakens came out there was a lot of change there was a lot of retconning yeah. There was a lot of, oh yeah, these 
20 years worth of novels actually never happened. Yeah, yeah. And that that wasn't a bad thing. It was, it, but what it did was a lot of hardcore Star Wars fans just needed to adapt to that sort of change, yeah. right? And so a lot of people saw it as, oh, this stinks, oh, this is bad. But then you actually see the movies, you watch the shows, and these are some of the greatest things that have ever come out in cinema, in my personal right. opinion. The Force Awakens is probably the greatest film of 2015. So, um, yeah, not bad, but just right. it re really requires that sharp adjustment to getting used to the fact that all these characters may not exist to the capacity that we wanted them yeah. to. Look, um, I heard, um, uh, I listened to Forcecast uh, podcast, and I heard yeah. Ryan on Forcecast talking the other day, and he, he put it really well. He said, <clears throat> back in 2012, at uh, Star Wars Celebration, um, the only things they were really talking about were Angry Birds Star Wars, and <laughs> the, and this new Star Wars animated series that was kind of like Family Guy, um, and it, but it never came out. Yeah, um, and that was it in 2012. And then mm -hmm. that same year, Disney signed a deal with Lucasfilm, yeah. and right. look what we have today. Like, love it or hate it, um, we have you know the this new trilogy. We have um, a, a theme park. Um, mm -hmm. We've got the Mandalorian. We've got uh, so much more coming on Disney Plus. I mean, look what we have today because of that. Uh, so look, yeah, yeah, Star Wars arguably could have been dead very soon after 2012. Um, That's very but, true. But, you know, Disney came in and, and signed this deal. Not perfect, nothing's perfect. Right. But we have what we have now because of that. And yeah. um, look, if it was just because of Galaxy's Edge, I've been there, you should go there, brother. Yeah, it's, I really want to. <laughs> it's amazing. But back to The Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah. What, what was your, uh, what's your favorite character in this, in this show? Because I mean, they're all new to us, so. Yeah, and and I and I kind of love that they didn't drag in a character we've already seen before. Um, everyone was new, gave everyone a, a clean slate, you know. As and as much as I love the Mandalorian, as much as I love the child, I it, it's, it's hard. hard. Uh, you know, there there's kind of a um, I don't want to say a maybe a dichotomy. Maybe that's too strong of a word, but you see, you know, a, a lot of that good bad conflict in a lot of these new characters you know um a lot of them are anti-villains and anti-heroes and not just straight you know hyper altruistic good guys and yeah. super evil bad guys <clears throat> um i really really enjoyed um mayfield or is it mayfeld uh bill burr's character yeah i was gonna man you're, you're diving deep here <laughs> dude i mean he was just he was just so fun and i was bill burr is such a foul mouth comedian yeah. I, but he's also very, very real. Yeah, he brought um, in the gun. Didn't he bring in the line about the Gungans? Um, yeah, which was just great. That yeah. just that made my heart swell. I was just like, <laughs> thank you for not forgetting. Because I really love episode one. A lot of people don't. And I love episode one. Yeah. And so that was just a really cute little nod. And Yeah, I've got uh, a Jar Jar Lego minifig back here somewhere. So I, I got yeah. a little bit of a place in my heart for Jar Jar. <laughs> yeah, and it was, it was kind of a kind of a reaction, a fun reaction, right? Nothing super serious, but a fun reaction to the fact that, yeah, in the real world, a lot of people, especially adults, complained about the character. Yeah. And so it was just kind of a nice little nod, like, yeah. well, too bad, he exists, deal with it, you know? Um, he was probably my favorite character, either her, or him, or um, Gina Carano's character, Carano. Yeah. I don't remember her name. Car I think Car of, uh, Kara, yeah, Kara Dune. Got her right here in Black Series and the nice. minifig. Um, interestingly enough, look what's missing from this. This is all that, that's out there right now. Yeah. Baby Yoda. <laughs> I don't believe that. They, they should have been, that's the first person they should have, I mean, dude. I know. The holidays were just swamped with merchandise about Baby Yoda. I, so I will, I will say I this, though, that, that keeping that a secret probably yeah. helped... Uh, build the trajectory of this show. I mean, and they, yeah. So and they, they did the tell, right thing like, by keeping it a secret. They did a yeah. That was that was absolutely amazing, especially for a character that was consistent throughout every episode. You yeah. think you would have seen him in the trailers? The best thing they could have done was omitted him from the trailer. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm very thankful they, that they did that. Well, this this little guy here is uh, is my favorite character, Quill. Quill um, was very cool. I, I just love I love a dry sense of humor. Yeah, and it, look, the fact that he just lays it out there, and then he says, "I have spoken." Mm -hmm. He just lays it. <laughs> and then yeah. you know, every time he said that, like there was no comeback. It was just like, 
as right. Fucking Mandalorian. It would, it, like, it, would just, right. it would just show his face, and he'd just be like, hmm, okay. And I'm also kind of a Nick Nolte fan, so the, his voice fits that really well. It did. I, I didn't realize that was Nick Nolte at first. And then when I found out that's who it was, I wasn't surprised. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I was like, I knew he felt familiar in yeah. a weird way. No, it's not. It's not. He didn't act that. He uh, used just the voiceover. But they did a good job of making that Ugnot, in my opinion, kind of look like Nick Nolte. <laughs> they did. Like, the face. Like, you could just kind of see it. It yeah. was weird. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they did a really good job with it. Um, so, obviously, we can't do a deep dive in this amount of time into every mm -hmm. single chapter of of the show, which I appreciate that they called them chapters, by the way. Yeah, um, that was neat. It, just, it, it felt um, very literary, especially mm -hmm. um, at the end of every episode, end of every chapter, they would have the concept art. Did you notice that? Yeah. Uh, as an I artist. Love, that was one of my favorite parts. Yeah. Where we showed the end credits and it shows like kind of like the storyboard almost. Like, yeah. Visually, that was just I so mean, who neat. sits through the end credits like for three to five minutes but they those the art was made i want that one i want that one right <laughs> I want that like one. i want that framed in my bedroom like, yeah those are um, so cool but I, I do want to kind of get into um baby yoda a little bit i mean yeah like i said i, I don't want to to i'm the one guy out there that doesn't want to hang on him too much because i think there's so much more to this show than uh baby yoda but yeah um He's obviously important, and, and honestly, my favorite scene with him is when we first see him. We see his mm -hmm. hand, and we see Mandalorian's hand, mm -hmm. and there's that whole Michelangelo um, yeah. image. Boop. They're giving us, like, questions that we didn't know we wanted answered. Yeah. You know? No one ever asked what species is Yoda is. Is there more of his species? Yeah. He's in both trilogies prominently. And he has a cameo in the in the third trilogy, so yeah. it's like. Do you remember Yaddle? I've never thought about it. Do you remember Yaddle? No. There was another one, Yoda and Yaddle. Yaddle sat on the Jedi Council in uh, the the prequel. Really? <laughs> yeah. What episode was that? Go, I don't know, but go check it out. <laughs> Yaddle. Oh wow! Now I have to Google the heck out of that. <laughs> oh man. But look, That's why I love Star Wars, because um, there's always something to learn. Yeah, the, the main thing that I got from Baby Yoda is, look, you've got this bounty hunter who is rugged and got all his armor on and his amazing rifle that would just disintegrate whatever it... <laughs> that was so cool. Which, did you notice the rifle disappeared like halfway through the, the, the season? I did. I don't know what the heck he did with it. Did he put it away so that the child wouldn't be hurt by it? Like I know, I, right? Did I miss something? Did it get destroyed in an episode? I don't. I don't. Know. I don't know. I hope it comes back. Um, it was That's pretty cool. Pretty awesome. But yeah. I think there's a huge juxtaposition between this um, bad a <laughs> Mandalorian yeah. and this tiny little cute as could be baby. Yeah. I mean, it's not just not every baby's cute. <laughs> baby Yoda is cute, and. I just, just, I, I have to say this. I was just telling my wife this too. Like, not every baby's cute just because they're a baby. Yeah, right. Ugly babies exist. Out there. Yeah, <laughs> but I think there's something to that. Is like he, he becomes fatherly. He becomes he uh, does. The, Very the caretaker. Protective. Yeah. Um, and I think there's something really incredible about about that. That you, in the first chapter of The Mandalorian, you mm -hmm. get a glimpse into his character. Now. He killed IG-11 <laughs> and, yeah. and to be able to do that. But, um, mm. you know, you get a glimpse into his character that he's not all bad. And that he Absolutely. wants to take care of. Um, and I don't, I don't know about you, but, I mean, we all knew that was a bounty. We knew that he he was being yeah. paid to, to, to take the, the child. But yeah. I got this sense from the very beginning that he was going to take care of the child and not just take the child. Um, yeah, and I just I thought that was pretty powerful. I mean, there's nothing better than if you ever see a, like a, a, a really buff dude holding a little baby. It's mm -hmm. like there's something powerful there. It's like I could crush you right now, right? But I'm gonna take care of you. Um, mm -hmm. And so you know, without going deep into Baby Yoda, that's that's what I took from it. any any Baby Yoda thoughts. Yeah, I um, my favorite thing about Baby Yoda is the fact that they revealed either in the first, second, or third episode, that he was 50 years old. Um, right. 
which is maybe an infant in his species. Yoda was what, like nine hundred or something by the time he died. Nine hundred um, and yeah, and something. <laughs> something, yeah. So like fifty is like whatever, but to us, fifty is a long time. Um, you know, right. sociology says that the technical age for being an elder is sixty-five, and so he's only, you know, for right. for us, yeah. being fifty is 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 close enough, and so. I loved the fact that, you know, he's intelligent. He's smart, right? Yeah. This is a baby, is an infant, at least for what we see. But this kid, I think he has a heightened intelligence that the characters around him don't really understand. And the fact that he can use the Force naturally, organically. Yeah. Um, we talked a little <laughs> bit about this in our last episode together, kind of about what this new trilogy uh, episode seven, eight, and nine have to say about the Force and the characters around it. Like you don't have to be a Jedi or a Sith to be a Force wielder. Yeah. Uh, and that there is a beautiful gray area, beautiful neutrality, um, where you can just kind of tap into the Force. And for a lot of people, it's really organic. And for Baby Yoda, I'm I'm interested to see if his species as a whole are just really just like can naturally yeah. tap into the Force. You Born know what I mean? It. Or yeah. Be, or what? Because right now we've only seen like these, like two spe two people of a species, like you said, three, and they're all very um, sensitive to the force. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm interested to see if his species is just like that, and also interested to to, to see why in the world no one else in the series knows that what he's doing is using the force. It's like they don't even know what that is. Right. And that's and crazy. actually Kawil says that. He says, "Can you explain to me again what happened? Because I don't quite understand." Yeah. Uh, and then, and then Mandalorian says, "I don't either." <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, and uh, interesting. I'm sure this was all planned, but um, the first instance we get of force healing is in the Mandalorian. Right. And then that it comes so up cool. in the Rise of Skywalker. So I mean, I'm sure they were yeah. planning that all along. But absolutely, um, it became a a, a big deal in both of those you know mm -hmm. both of those shows so yeah. um all right so there's a couple of um kind of easter eggs that i want to talk about and and one of them is in i believe it was chapter five um mm -hmm. when we have the character that we don't know who it is walk up with his spurs on uh, mm. you remember at the end of the the chapter yeah um, yeah yeah and <laughs> immediately immediately i thought it's boba fett because boba fett oh. had spurs um, but of course, so? Boba Fett died in the Sarlacc pit. But how Die. many people? How many people have died in Star Wars and come back? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's Boba Fett. I kind of hope it's Boba Fett. But mm -hmm. but I got to be honest with you, <clears throat> the the ten year old little kid in me that loves Boba Fett kind of hopes it's not because what's gonna what I would think is gonna happen is it's gonna be a conflict between Boba Fett and Mandalorian. Um, well. That could be one of the coolest things in Star Wars. It could be, but and then yeah, and from there we can take a even deeper dive into the Mandalorian culture and tradition and lore. Yeah, I, I mean that would just be spectacular. Um, I think it would be spectacular if it wasn't him. I mean, here's here's what I imagine. I don't imagine the best thing. The best case scenario is that it's Boba Fett. That's the worst case scenario. Yeah, is that it's Boba Fett. <laughs> so it can only be good or good yeah really you know i mean um, the other the other theory out there is that it could be moff gideon because we see him at the end could um, be. did he have spurs out at the end of chapter no uh, no but that that's what makes me think it was, it's um it's boba boba yeah so but uh, talk about moff gideon so as we wrap this up here um yeah. you know that last chapter we've got finally the lightsaber that we didn't know we needed and then it's not only a lightsaber, it is the lightsaber when it comes to Mandalorian culture. Right. Um, it's, yeah, it's the dark saber. So, yeah, you get us started on that. And that <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about that? That was just so cool. It took, it took a, a second for me to actually process that mm -hmm. because we were, we were both, because like the blade of a, of a, um, a dark saber isn't like really like, rounded or anything it's very thin blade like a yeah. katana it just naturally it just looks different all well, it's around dark, not just the color but it's got the glow around it 
right as the like white keep, glow I'm, on I'm the trying outside to figure out, instead of... I'm trying light. to figure out how they're going to make that in Galaxy's Edge, because I'm sure they're going to try. Um, but yeah. how how would you make that? Like I don't know. I have no idea. <clears throat> you would have to use so many different yeah. off-whites and off-blacks, and th that would just be nuts. I don't know yet. But that was that was a surprise when it when I actually processed the fact that that was the dark saber now we know that there is a, a very personal history between Gideon and you know the Mandalorians yeah. now who did he have to kill to get that saber how did he get that saber um and will that eventually become the Mandalorian's primary weapon yeah. in the future you know is he going to take it back and restore like you were saying earlier kind of restore what the Mandalorians were there's just, yeah. Yeah, there's... And also, like, Moff Gideon is just awesome, by the way. I really, really like yeah. his character. Yeah, I appreciate it that there was another Moff out there than just Tarkin from Episode 4. So, we it's cool to see more yeah. of that. But So, as a, as, a, yeah. as a Boba Fett fan, and, a, and therefore a Mandalorian fan, um, not just the show, but the culture uh, of Mandalore, um, yeah. the, the Darksaber is, like huge in the lore and legend of the Mandalorians. I mean, right. it was originally created by Tar Vizsla, if you don't if you don't know, it's created by Tar Vizsla, the first Mandalorian ever inducted into the Jedi Order. Now, that's mm. a very interesting thing because if you remember in the Mandalorian, uh, whenever he went back to get his armor and she was she asked uh, what was the creature that you killed and he said the Mudhorn. Um, and so she was going to make the insignia of the Mudhorn and he said, "But wait, uh, you can't do that because I got some help from my enemy, mm. um, who we know is either a Jedi or a Jedi in training because he's got Jedi powers. Right. Um, there is this. There's always been this kind of rift between Mandalorian and the Jedi, and so yeah. we've got this one Mandalorian, Tar Vizsla, who um, was the first Mandalorian to be a Jedi. So that's mm -hmm. that's big in and of itself. Created the the dark saber. For and then sure. in Rebels 4, um, if you watch Rebels um, Season 4, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's passed down. Maul had it and then gave it to Sabine Wren, and then Sabine Wren gave it to Bo-Katan, and Bo-Katan was the last person that we knew had it. So there's right. all these questions as to, like, who who had the Darksaber? How did you mm -hmm. get the Darksaber? And, right. man, are the Mandalorians going to be PO'd? <laughs> 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 and... They're, that's the end of the show. I mean, we just know that the Mandalorians are going to be getting that back. Absolutely. It's going to be insane. And I think we're going to see another, uh, like a resurgence of of Mandalorians. Because they're, 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 there've got to be so many more Mandalorians across the galaxy. Oh, yeah. They can't just, we, we, it would be, I would be so angry if we literally saw every Mandalor Mandalorian that exists in the Star Wars universe at that time. Well, yeah. In, I mean, the scene the series. The scene at the end of um, chapter uh, three or four, where the Mandalorians come out of hiding to help him. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was one of my favorite scenes, and it was just like you know ten of them. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, it also had that little Rocketeer scene where he's flying next to right. the. <laughs> I'm a big Rocketeer a fan. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm with you, man. We we need to see. Um, and then, you know, you got Clone Wars Season 7 coming out in February, and That's, it's going to have, oh, it's supposed to end with the Siege of Mandal Mandalore, so, yeah. you know, they know what they're doing, they're getting, oh yeah, getting everything going there, but yeah. man, I've had, I've had fun today, mm -hmm. um, I, I always love getting, getting with you, Justin, and just geeking out on this kind of stuff, um, me too, man, um, what, share a little bit about your podcast over at Super Tangent, I, if, if, uh, if folks don't know about it, what's going on there? Sure. So my podcast is Super Tangent Podcast. Uh, for season three, I've renamed it a Blogcast because I podcast and blog. Um, and uh, I've been taking a little bit of a break between season two and season three. And the first episode of season three is actually going to be released this uh, well, this Monday. It'll be the January 20th. Yeah. Um, so by the time this video gets released, it'll probably be out. Um, and I'm just kind of talking, reflecting a little bit about late 2019 as we move into 2020. Cool video games that came out, movies that came out that I loved. Including. Oh, have you played Jedi Fallen Order? I haven't, and I talk about that. I was like, I have to touch this game because it's, apparently it's one of the best games of 2019. It's one of the amazing. Best Star Wars games. I don't, I don't own a PS4. I don't own an Xbox. I'm a Nintendo guy. I've got a whole show yeah. that we did on, on that. And mm -hmm. but I have a friend 
who has both Xbox and PS4, and he doesn't play his PS4 anymore, so he loaned it to me. I went and got the game, or Lisa got it for me for Christmas. Nice. It's amazing. And, and the, here's it? why it's amazing. I'm getting in on your super tangent stuff here, but... No, nope, um, no, go for it. It's amazing because of the story. That's what Star yeah. Wars is so good at. That's what Disney is so good at, is the story. Yeah. And the story of this game is amazing. Um, and yeah. and so, yeah, it's a great game. It's a great game. You should check it out. Right on. Yeah, definitely going to get that. I do talk about it a little bit in that episode, but I, I got to buy it for myself and definitely try yeah, it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Super Tangent is just a nerd podcast, geek podcast, where I kind of take stuff and break it apart and build it back up and review stuff that I love and kind of talk about things from my childhood that helped me create the man you see today and here today. Um, you know, by the grace of God, I, I just grew up nerd and I love nerd and I'm raising a nerd. So hey, nerd is cool now. Nerd is cool now. So <laughs> just take it and run with it. Yeah, so that's, that's what right. your super tangent is about. Um, you can see, you can listen to my show and what I have of it so far on uh, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. And yeah, all those links to... will be in the description below, so check that out. Absolutely, and I'll be on Apple Podcast again quite soon. There's a little technical issue, but I'm have to. Uh, I'll fix that. So check me out. Um, I I will also be starting a YouTube channel. I recorded the first two episodes already, so look out for Super Tangent on YouTube. Yeah, uh, It'll be good. The Facebook group Nerds and Knowledge on on <laughs> the Facebook group on Facebook, <laughs> and uh, Super Tangent Store on Etsy, where I have fun Star Wars themed stickers. Oh yeah, um, gotta check those stickers out. They're they're awesome. Um, and we're gonna get together. J Justin and I have talked about doing this more often. We uh, we both love Star Wars, and we're gonna get together more often and talk about talk about it. But um, you know, I know with your podcast and with YouTube, it's really important to get those uh, reviews, uh, especially with podcasts, to get those reviews so you can get your five stars up and uh, get those likes um, and, and all that. So uh, make sure that you do that for him. He, he does a great job, and he's gonna keep bringing you the fandom and the geeks and the nerds and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, here at Things I Love, we're going to keep bringing you these positive videos every single week all about Disney, Star Wars, and Lego. And so if you're new to this channel, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, hit that bell to be notified of these weekly positive videos and give us a big thumbs up if you like this video. All right, well, this has been Mark Eddington and Justin Williams signing off. <laughs> Just a bit about us to help you be more you. <laughs>